A heartly welcome to this video divine service from the Our Saviour Evangelical Lutheran Congregation in Wartburg. Nestled between the Ascension of Christ on the one hand and Pentecost on the other lies this Sunday ex Audi. Jesus encourages us to spend this time praying and waiting for the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Despite all hardships and strife we will have to endure in this life, the Holy Spirit will be there to guide, lead and comfort us. Jesus promises this to us. We can be certain of it. Let us now sing the opening hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, 
We poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by our thoughts, words, and actions. Therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, since you gave your one and only Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, help us to grow in knowing you and your will, and guide us to truly obey your word, so that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His holy name, He gives power to become children of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. Let us now sing the introit for today. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. O glory be to God on high, and thanks for all his faith. King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the 
epistle reading for this Sunday, taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, the verses 14 to 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his, holy fam- his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Hear also the Gospel reading, taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 26, to chapter 16, verse 4. Glory be to you, O Lord. When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our faith, together with the whole Christian Church on earth, with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, the verses 31 to 34. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, and I will make a covenant with Israel and a covenant with Judah, a new covenant. It won't be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I grasped them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. For this will be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will each one teach his neighbor, nor will a man teach his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all of them, from the least to the greatest, will know me, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their guilt and remember their sins no more. Let us pray. Lord, keep us steadfast in your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, two businessmen enter into a partnership. They draw up business plans. They determine the extent of each other's responsibilities. And they set up a contract for both parties to sign. They have everything on black and white. And the signature seals the deal. But after a while, one of the two doesn't keep his part of the deal. More and more, he is in breach of his contract. He doesn't stick to the agreement. He does his own thing, breaking the commitment to the contract over and over again. Yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, something similar happened between God and the people of Israel. God and the Israelites also had a contract, a covenant. God promised to make Israel into a great nation. He promised them he promised that Israel from the offspring of Abraham would from Israel would come a blessing for all people. He promised to lead them into the promised land and to be their God. After God had led the people of Israel out of Egypt and towards the promised land, God gave the people of Israel a set of rules or commandments according to which they should conduct their lives. The very first commandment was for the people of Israel to have no other gods besides the one true God, the God who created them, the God who chose them to be his people, the God who wants to enter with them into a covenant relationship. The people of Israel, on their part, agreed to this contract. We read about this in Exodus chapter 24. Then Moses took the book of the covenant and read it in the, in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has, spro- has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with these words. After this, Moses went up to the mountain again, this time for forty days. When Moses came down, the people of Israel, who had recently solemnly promised to uphold their part of the covenant with God. These people had built for themselves their own visible, fake, golden calf. That was now their God, they proclaimed. They had broken their promise to the real God. The deal was off. The contract was cancelled. Or was it? No, it was not. Why not? Because God remained faithful to his people and to his promises. God kept his part of the deal. He remained true to the people, even though they turned their backs on him. 
the history of the people of Israel, which we read about in the Old Testament, is filled with countless accounts of Israel being unfaithful to God. But God never retracts his promises from his people, to his people. He always upholds his part of the deal. His steadfast love remains forever. The story of God and the people of Israel in the Old Testament has many ups and downs. But one thing never changes. God's steadfast love and mercy. He always remains true to his people. Yes, God disciplined his people. Yes, he reprimanded Israel over and over again to turn from their own wicked and selfish ways and to turn to him. He even let the Assyrians destroy the northern kingdom of Israel and the Babylonians demolish the southern kingdom of Judah, including its capital Jerusalem and the temple. But even in those lowest of lows, God remained true to his people. He never forgot his promises to them. Generation after generation, the people of Israel broke their end of the deal. But God always kept his. But it became obvious that the old covenant could not continue like this forever. This was no way of living in a covenant, marriage-like relationship. What was wrong with this covenant? Us, human beings, is what's wrong with it. We are the problem. We are incapable of upholding our part of the deal. And that is why God decided to make a new covenant. And he chose his prophet Jeremiah to be the first to announce, that, to announce this. Jeremiah writes, in the name of the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, and I will make a covenant with Israel and a covenant with Judah, a new covenant. It won't be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I grasped them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I was a husband to them. God makes a new covenant. Dear friends, does that, does that mean that God changes who he is? Doesn't God tell us in his word that he never changes? That he is the same yesterday, today and forever? No, God does not change who he is. In the new covenant, God's good and wise law remains true. His law still shows us how to live our lives and how we have not obeyed his will. His law remains a guide for our lives. What changes in the new covenant is the way in which God reveals this law to his people. Jeremiah writes about this in uh, writes about this new covenant. For this will be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God. They will be my people. No longer will each, each one teach his neighbor, nor will a man teach his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all of them, from the least to the greatest, will know me, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their guilt and remember their sins no more. God will establish a new covenant with his people, not written on parchment or on tablets of stone, but written on every human heart. God will give not only the desire, but also the power to do his will. This covenant will be an intrinsic covenant rather than external. When will this covenant be sealed? When will it ta take effect? God simply says here through Jeremiah, the days are coming. Dear friends, the New Testament gives us the answer. The new covenant was sealed in the blood of the eternal Son of God, Jesus Christ. God himself came down from his heavenly throne in Christ and he took care of the sins of the world once and for all. 
And in so doing, he changes the hearts of his people. In your baptism, God added you to his covenant. He has also added you to his kingdom. Because of the forgiveness he won for us on the cross in Christ, we have been made heirs of heaven. In faith, our hearts are governed by the Holy Spirit. God's law is written in our hearts. We are already now part of God's new creation. But we still live in our sinful bodies. Every day, a battle between the new creation and our old Adam rages within us. And our sinful old Adam often gets the upper hand. And we transgress and we overstep the boundaries of God's covenant with us. Therefore, before we point fingers to the rebellious people of Israel, we need to take a long and hard look at ourselves. We too transgress against God's holy law. God's will, God's law continues to accuse us for not keeping it. But in Christ, there is forgiveness. Christ trades our sins, our transgressions, for his perfect righteousness. Therefore, in the new covenant, God upholds both sides of the deal. This wonderful act of mercy causes us to want to follow him with willing hearts and to do good to others in reply to his great mercy as fruits of our faith. Through his prophet Jeremiah, God already proclaimed, For I will forgive their guilt and remember their sins no more. Dear friends in Christ, on Thursday we celebrated Christ's ascension into heaven. The risen Christ already reigns glorious and victorious over all creation. And while the new covenant has already been sealed in Christ's blood, it will only reach its fulfillment in heaven. In heaven, in the presence of God, we will no longer carry the burden of our sinful flesh. We will know God's will, and we will do God's will. Our sinful flesh will no longer drag us down. I cannot wait for that day. Jeremiah writes, No longer will each one teach his neighbor, nor will a man teach his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all of them, from the least to the greatest, will know me. This new covenant will reach its fulfillment in heaven. But this new creation, this new creation in us has already begun. It begins in us through faith in Christ. Already now, in faith, we are new creations in Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. The forgiveness Christ won for us is the foundation for the new heart which God gives us. In Jesus Christ, God himself came down to us, became one of us, kept God's law perfectly for us, and then went to the cross for us to bear the burden of our sin. And in his holy supper, Christ intimately unites us with himself. He says, take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Before we celebrate Holy Communion here in church, which will hopefully be not too long, we will sing, as we do every time we celebrate Holy Communion, words from Christ's ancestor, King David. Already King David linked these two, a new heart and forgiveness of sins, together. When he prayed, Hide not your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. 
Christ's forgiveness gives us a new and willing spirit to follow God's will. His blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. But not only our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Christ also won the forgiveness for the people of God of the Old Covenant, who put their trust in Him and in His promise to save them through a descendant of Abraham and David. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God keeps His promises. Unlike us, He always remains true to His covenant. And in Jesus Christ, God even took our transgressions against Him on Himself and paid for them in full. That is the merciful God whom we serve. May He, through His Spirit, keep us in this true faith in Him until we reach our eternal home with Him in Heaven. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Father, your, your resurrected Son now sits in victory at your right hand, victorious over sin, death and the devil's power. Because of Jesus' victory, you give us poor sinners eternal life. We thank you for this wondrous gift. By your Holy Spirit, grant us the ability to live in this world as people filled with your life and your truth, and as people resting on your grace. By your Gospel, call to repentance those who do not yet trust in you for salvation. Give zeal to our congregation in seeking those who remain outside your kingdom of grace. Bless the outreach efforts of our congregation so that the Holy Spirit would create saving faith in the unbelievers you place in our lives. Put our trust in your powerful means of grace to accomplish the spiritual conversion that we humans can never accomplish by our own efforts. Lord of the Church, guide all those who are preparing the service to serve in the office of the ministry. We pray especially for our congregation member Philip Wartmann, Give him and all seminarians, even in this difficult time of lockdown, sound training in your word and an empathetic heart for the needs of your people. Heavenly Father, abide with those wearied by sickness and affliction. Grant your strength and presence to all those undergoing medical tests, those receiving treatment for illness and those who are suffering. Help them to remember that you are with them to bring them comfort in the midst of all pain and suffering. We bring you these petitions, O Father, confident that you will hear us in whatever we ask, for the sake of your Son, who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Let us now sing the closing hymn. Jesus Christ.